This is an image film about Switzerland. Featuring our greatest achievements. Showing you that we are pretty awesome. Showing the world that we can achieve incredible stuff. Uh, let's be honest. You already know what Switzerland looks like. That is, if you can find it. We're not exactly the largest country in the world. Nor do we have the largest cities, the tallest buildings, or the most numerous population. We did, however, learn how to make the best out of it. When we started taking our first steps, we figured out how to use the stuff other countries brought to us. We became pioneers in the production of textiles, engineering, railway construction, or the art of making fine chocolate. Since we don't have any natural resources or access to the ocean, we had to learn how to build and nurture things that last. To tame our wild country and meet our neighbors, we had to build bridges, tunnels, and serpentines. We had to be more innovative, precise, and inventive. In order to become useful to others, we had to become craftsmen. So this being an image film about Switzerland, about our greatest achievements, it's time we put them on display. We built the longest train tunnel in the world on budget and on time. We created a regular interval timetable, reaching even the most remote stations approximately every 15 minutes. We invented turbines, creating energy out of water, even combining nature's energy sources, inspiring visions of electromobility. We built devices, removing CO2 from the air and storing it safely in the ground. We made the wind work for a sustainable future. However, this time we wanted to shift the focus from our achievements to the know-how we have gained from them. The know-how we gained through our schools, our apprenticeships, and the world's top leading universities. It is this know-how that helps you build your projects. On time, on budget. Projects that last. And that is, to be honest, what we really have achieved. So let us have an honest conversation about your project. Contact Team Switzerland now. Yeah, we can have it. Dear Excellencies, dear representatives of governments and the private sector, dear Federal Councilor Guy Parmelin, dear State Secretaries, dear guests online in the global audience, in the name of the State Secretary of, for Economic Affairs, SECO, Swiss Export Risk Insurance, SERF, Swiss MEM, Swiss Rail, and Switzerland Global Enterprise, a very warm welcome to Switzerland, to those of you who are travel, have traveled to our country, and to all the rest, welcome to Davos. Your participation means a lot to us, and we are convinced that you will get some inspiring insights today of Swiss innovation in the field of infrastructure. My name is Patrick Wermelinger, Head of Investment Promotion at Switzerland Global Enterprise, and I'm honored to moderate today's session with an amazing lineup of panelists and speakers um, speaking today in our event. Please join me now in welcoming warmly our Federal Councillor Guy Parmelin. Mr. Federal Councillor, with your participation, you're highlighting Switzerland's innovation ecosystem and its ambition to a more sustainable global infrastructure. Bienvenue à vous la parole. Mesdames et Messieurs, vos titres, fonctions et très nombreuses qualités. Dear representatives of the political delegations, dear representatives of the EPCs, 
Ladies and gentlemen, it is a real pleasure to, for me to welcome you today to the House of Switzerland at the WEF here in Davos. The topic is large-scale infrastructure, a subject in which Switzerland is strong and internationally admired. Switzerland infrastructure is impressive, for example, in the area of mobility. What immediately comes to mind is the work of the Century, the new rail link through the Alps NRLA, the Gotha Base Tunnel, which connects the north side of the Alps with the south side of the Alps, making it strategically very important for Europe. The NRLA also led the foundation for shifting traffic from road to rail to protect the Alps. A key project which involved an enormous amount of know-how. But that's enough about historic achievements. What about the future of its infrastructure worldwide? The challenges are great. Demographic change, urbanization, and above all, climate change show. The future of large-scale infrastructures must be sustainable and efficient. This is precisely where innovative Swiss companies can make a significant global contribution, whether through new technologies in railway or tunnel construction. Today, you'll get some insight into the highly innovative project Cargo Souterrain with innovative drive systems or with low CO2 construction materials. It is an important concern of the Federal Council to show how the expertise of the Swiss economy can contribute to global challenges in the field of infrastructure. And so I'm all the more pleased about this event at the House of Switzerland. This is the place where politics, business and the industries that decisive, decisively shape the future of our infrastructure, cultivate and strengthen their partnerships. At this point, I would like to thank the event organizers. Together they strengthen and we strengthen Swiss companies in their international activities and they position Switzerland as a leading innovation and technology location. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to the event Rethink Infrastructure Sustainably. Among you are representatives of EPCs. You help to cultivate competition within even large-scale infrastructure projects. That's important because experience has shown good basic service is guaranteed when it is supplied by the best, most innovative mm. providers. I wish you an excellent and an exciting event with some insight into the future of our infrastructure along with some good discussions. Thank you and have a nice afternoon. Yeah, afternoon. Thank you very much, Mr. Kavala. Merci beaucoup. Okay, we are jumping right into it. So today it's all about Swiss innovative companies and also research institutions and their contribution to a more sustainable future. The speakers you will see right now, I will all stay for uh, the networking lunch for your individual talks and questions. And I would like to start immediately then with Stefan Kasper from Swiss Loop Tunneling, a Swiss company which won a design award and ranked second in Elon Musk's Not a Boring competition in Las Vegas back in September um, 21. So, uh, Stefan, the fastest train today are running, or better, flying at 600 kilometers an hour. The distance between San Francisco and Seattle is approximately, if you do draft a direct line, 1,000 kilometers. So, can trains in future do that in one hour? Please welcome Stefan Kasper. Yeah, hello everyone. So San Francisco to Seattle, Zurich to Berlin, Madrid to Paris, Rome to London, Mumbai to Delhi, Shanghai, Hong Kong, Johannesburg, 
to Cape Town. These pairs of cities have one thing in common. All of them could be connected in an eco-friendly way in one hour of travel time. Right now, hundreds of engineers all over the world are working on turning this vision called Hyperloop into reality. Already the first railway engineers in the 19th century concluded that air resistance and friction are inhibiting trains to become faster and more energy efficient. Air resistance grows exponentially with speed. That's why airplanes today fly at a height of around 10 kilometers. Because at that height, they need to overcome only 0.3 bar instead of one bar air pressure we have on the ground. Air resistance is also the reason why trains will never reach speeds of airplanes. Even if they technically could, we would lose so much energy only to overcome air resistance. If we want to travel at the speeds of an airplane with the ecological footprint of a train, we need to build Hyperloop systems. We get rid of the air resistance by using vacuum pumps to reduce the air pressure inside the tube down to one millibar. This allows Hyperloop vehicles to travel at speeds of around 1,000 kilometers per hour on full electric uh, powered magnetic levitation. Switzerland has a great history in researching and developing this technology. At the EPFL, the Hyperloop idea was already being researched under the name of Swiss Metro from 1974 onwards. And in 2013, Elon Musk picked up the idea, published a white paper, and started the SpaceX Hyperloop competitions in 2017. The teams from EPFL and from ETH Zurich took part in those competitions and placed in the top three several times. And those competitions brought up a new generation of engineers working on Hyperloop. It was the starting point for most organizations that are active in the Hyperloop market today. I'm representing three organizations based in Switzerland, which push forward the technology in an alliance. First, we have Swissloop, which is ETH's Zurich's uh, Hyperloop team to develop Hyperloop vehicles, the pods. Then we have Eurotube, and Eurotube is a research institute of national importance and combines technologies from the train, airplane, and space industry to build vacuum-proof tubes and infrastructure. And last but not least, we also need to dig a lot of tunnels. And Swiss Loop Tunneling is experimenting with different tunneling technologies to provide faster and cheaper solutions to dig tunnels. Over the past several years, different organizations worked together to prove the different technologies needed uh, to develop Hyperloop networks. And we're now only years away from first commercial Hyperloop lines. With new regulation of short-haul flights in Europe on the horizon, let us work together to speed up the development of the Hyperloop technology. We're currently at the end of a four-year planning process of the world's biggest Hyperloop testing infrastructure here in Switzerland, in the canton of Valais. And the three kilometer long tube will help startups and student teams from around the world to test their vehicles, uh, infrastructure, technologies, up to speeds of 1,000 kilometers per hour. Let's work together to develop the next logical step to high speed trains and start a new era of transportation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and I'm really looking forward to have that one-hour drive between those cities you mentioned, so it will be amazing for all of us, and it's even sustainable, so uh, try hard globally with the teams to, to achieve this. Thank you so much for this. So our next guest is the Swiss architect Pierre de Meuron. Uh, I don't have to present him too um, in detail, but some very prestigious and well-known buildings have been developed by Herzog and Demeron all over the world. The Bird's Nest in Beijing, the Olympic Stadium, the Elb Philalvomi in, in Hamburg, or the Tate Modern Gallery Project in London. In 2020, uh, Herzog and Demeron has been commissioned with a large-scale territorial study and the planning of a series of cargo hubs in their urban integration for the groundbreaking Swiss logistics project called Cargo Sutra, already mentioned by our federal council, Guy Barnala, in Switzerland. Since Pierre unfortunately cannot be with us today, he has the following message for us. Here we are in the middle of our topic, 
Here we are in the middle of the cargo souterrain issues. To say we are in a logistical era here in Basel at the corner of three countries, Switzerland, Germany and France. And you see all around us what is going on here every day, every night, all the year through. This is where goods are being transported, imported, exported into Switzerland. And Cargo Souterrain is thinking about these transport systems for the future, for the goods. Cargo Souterrain is at first hand a logistic project. It is to bring goods from A to B, from production to distribution to the customer. Second, it is a societal project as the society is expecting a reliable transport system. And thirdly, Cargo Souterrain is also an environmental project as it reduces the traffic above ground. The benefit of Cargo Souterrain is to protect the landscape from being overbuilt by additional infrastructures for transport systems like railways and roads above ground. Cargo Souterrain brings the good, the transport system of the goods below ground and is so not affecting the above ground life, the above ground conditions. Providing transport systems can only be achieved if every stakeholder, the existing logistic companies, but also the new, like Cargo Souterrain, are doing this together, integrating all the different chains into one overall change of transport system. It improves the quality of life of the inhabitants for better air, for more nature, and for more guarantee for the supply of the products. Thank you very much, Pierre, from the audience uh, for that message. We now uh, may welcome Daniel Wiener on stage. He is member of the board uh, of directors and the head of investor relations and finance um, uh, with uh, Cargo Souterrain. With Daniel, we have the great opportunity to speak about the economic viability of the project. Daniel Wiener is an economist and arts manager who successfully links sustainably, uh, sustainability on one side to business on the other side. Yet in the 90s, Daniel, uh, you developed sustainability for the Swiss Banking SM Corporation and UBS. So early, early rider there already. And even the G20 is interested to work with you. So thank you for being here with us today. So we have seen the introduction by Pierre Demeron uh, on this amazing project. And please now share with us also some elements on the costs and investment side, because maybe people would like to know that sounds amazing, but how can we finance that? How, what's the revenue? What's the benefit? So yep. please share a bit with the audience okay. your thoughts about this. Okay, so your question would be, um, how much does it cost? That would be my <laughs> question, yes, po okay. politically asked. So exactly. the answer is, it doesn't cost anything to the public. It's a private investment. It's the first big private investment of an infrastructure in Switzerland. And it's structured for those who are experts as a project finance um, in a project finance manner. That means that there is no state guarantee behind it, but the guarantee for the project investors is the market. The, the people who are going to use this, um, this tunnel system of 500 kilometers between Geneva and St. Gallen and Basel and Luzerne, it is, we, we perceive it as one city. The northern part of Switzerland is one city that will have 10 million inhabitants when we start to operate in 2031. And the first leg goes from the center of Switzerland, um, from Egelkingen, Herklingen, to Zurich and Zurich Airport. It has 10 hubs mm -hmm. where goods come, out, uh, come in and out, and it costs 3 billion Swiss francs. And the whole system is 30 billion Swiss francs. And fo to focus on the first leg, which is going to be constructed between 2026 and 2031, when we open that first leg, th these three billions are going to bro be broken down into uh, 1.5 billions of equity and 1.5 billion of debt. Um, that's, that's the structure that we are aiming at. Okay. And if you talk now about these figures, are you well prepared for this period or are you yeah, still yeah. looking, looking yeah, for With this project, you learn to, to work with, with big 
numbers, you know. Okay. Uh, you have to get used to it, I, 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 I have to admit. But um, you could compare to the NEAT that uh, a federal councillor um, Baumann I mentioned. It's a, a similar size but privately owned, meaning that we dig the tunnels and we own them and we operate them for 100 years. And that makes the seemingly expensive tunnel financially viable because we can also depreciate it for, for 100 years. We can use it as an additional ground where we not only transport goods, but also sort goods mm -hmm. and also puffer, buffer goods. So it is, a, it is actually not only a transportation system and not only a logistics system, it's an Im improvement of Switzerland because we build a new ground on the ground. On the ground. And, and we can use it uh, as, we, as, uh, as uh, the business asks for it. So it's not a uh, political infrastructure, it's a business-based infrastructure. That's the okay. secret behind financing it. And we, can, uh, we have a business model that actually locks in also um, needs from, our, uh, from, from customers. Mm -hmm. And we have, when we start digging, we'll have signed contracts from customers who will use the system. Mm -hmm. That's how we guarantee for the investors. Okay. And we've heard also by Pierre Lemeron that is a project which is uh, contributing to sustainability. And maybe you can you know, share about some thoughts and, and the effects it will have as well, yeah. a bit in reduction <coughs> uh, on the sustainable yeah. side. So we have some studies in this area, for instance, the CO2 footprint of the transportation that is going to take place below ground is 80% below what it will be in 2031 when we open the tunnel, much more even than today. But the road transportation will improve as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is, which I find important, is that we can maybe avoid to build out uh, highways, which are already digested nowadays. And if we don't need, if we have underground transportations, imagine all the trucks, um, or 30% of the trucks, <laughs> <laughs> disappearing from the highways. It means that you have less pressure to use more fertile land to build out these infrastructures. That's one of one aspect, mm -hmm. uh, apart from the CO2, and there are many more, especially in the cities, where, where with the order of delivery from the tunnel, we can be much more efficient in delivering goods electric with electric vehicles or man-driven vehicles in the city, and that means that the city is also relieved of 30% of the truck traffic. Great, that, that makes the cities more Green, more livable, less and more space. More that space is, can, can be used for other things like yep. children's play or driving bicycles or putting in parks, whatever the municipality needs. Okay, sounds sounds very great to me. Uh, a last question to you: um, Are you as well interested to support with the project, the vision, and the the competences you have now within our, your team? Um, other countries in in maybe you know talking and realizing as well a project like this. Well, we have a lot of demand from, from ci big cities in, around the world, from many, many countries. And we also go and talk to them, or they come to Switzerland to talk to us. But we really focus on the Swiss project now. We want to deliver it mm -hmm. as quickly as possible. Once it's delivered, of course, we can also serve others. And I think the industry, you saw the big pictures of all the logos. These are actually investors in Cargo Sutra. Yeah. And some of them are technology partners. They will gladly gladly help other cities to put in at uh, to replicate or to adapt what we did for the local market but before we do that we want to do uh, it in switzerland because switzerland is the switzerland of europe and so we have a strong law in place which is gives us stability mm -hmm. and uh, thanks to that law we know what the framework con conditions are and that's a big opportunity to show that it works that it works in a financially viable way. Thank you very much, Daniel. We are very much looking forward to 2031, where we or have all the cargo souterrain or we have the 1,000 kilometer speed trains here in Switzerland. You know, we are tubes up, tubes down. All right. Amazing. There's a lot of space underground. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, <laughs> it's all, all rocks, I think, in Switzerland. Yeah, right? that's, that's better if it's rock. If, if it's sand or water, it's. More tricky. So okay. let's let's do rocks. Yes. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> let, on the rocks. Let's rock it. Exactly. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank, you Thank you very you. much, you. Uh, Daniel. <laughs> so now we are stepping ahead. We are coming now to our panel and talk about how clean technology can shape 
the future. And in Switzerland, for the ones which are not so familiar, we have very close uh, links between uh, the academia, the industry, and developments and, and ideas can be exchanged and realized and come out to the market. So that makes our country uh, really uh, unique also in that specific uh, and topic. Today, I welcome four representatives of or the technology or the innovation ecosystem in uh, specifically the topic of mobility and construction. And we have four panelists, you have seen them on the program just quickly. We have Christian Bach, Head of Vehicle Propulsion Systems Department at the Swiss Federal Laboratories for Materials Science and Technology, EMPA, in, in a short version. We have Edgar Keller from ABB, he is President of the Division uh, Traction. We have Karen Scrivener, um, professor at EPFL and known for her pioneering work in cementis, cementitious materials. And we have Felix Amberg, he's president of the Amberg Group, a global solution provider uh, for both projects we have heard, uh, above ground and below ground, as I understand. So we can continue that, that uh, competition, who is, uh, who is first in, in achieving the, the results. May I warmly welcome under your applause the four panelists, please. Thank you. Maybe you can help yourself with a cup of water and we dive right into it. Mm -hmm. So we have now a chance uh, together with the four panelists to know a bit more about their visions, their insights as well, where research is or where already the applications are, are happening. And we will start with science. And I will start with you, Karen, first. Mm -hmm. So you're conducting research in the field of sustainable construction. What is key in your view for future infrastructure projects? Okay, so I think two aspects are key. First of all, the need for future infrastructure projects is really huge. I mean, we can see this in just two figures. You know, today, more than one billion people do not have decent housing conditions even. And just on the continent of Africa, it's also predicted to have a population growth of around one billion people. So there's a huge need for infrastructure, We've heard about Switzerland, but the need is much greater, in fact, in the developing world. And then, of course, my work is on materials, and we have to realize the materials we use today are a direct co um, consequence of the composition of the earth. So the material we use most is concrete, and everybody thinks it's an oilful material, but in fact, the environmental impact only comes from the fact we use about 30 billion tons a year. And if we think about, say, biomaterials like wood, this is only about 10% of concrete, and already we're actually cutting down more trees than we're planting. It was estimated to replace just one quarter of concrete with wood, you would have to plant new forests one and a half times the size of India. So, of course, we should use timber where we have it, but we cannot in any meaningful way replace concrete. But we can make concrete an awful lot better, and that's where our research is focused on new cement types that can reduce CO2 by up to 40%. Um, but also then we need to connect the other parts of the value chain, how we put the cement in concrete, how we put the concretes in the buildings and the infrastructure and the tunnels, of course, and um, all the way through. Amazing, that sounds promising. I'm then curious to hear from you how you, you see that. But let's, let's continue with the mobility topic. It's an important factor, mm -hmm. mobility in, in infrastructure and, so, and uh, sustainable infrastructure. So Christian, um, to you, you're conducting research in the field of fuels. And uh, what role do you see for propulsion systems in, in general, also related to infrastructure projects? Mm -hmm. Yes, so our vision is to have a fossil-free energy supply for mobility. This sounds easy and simple, but is not. So let's say it's easy to run vehicles with renewable energy, but it's difficult to not only take the renewable energy from the other uh, applicants away. So that's why we think that the powertrains of the future has also to supply some systemic benefit. Mm -hmm. And in this context, we see electric cars, for example, as an energy storage device. We see hydrogen mobility due to the flexibility of hydrogen production, also as a solution provider for uh, the use of excess electricity. And we see synthetic fuels as a solution 
to supply renewable energy where we have an uh, undersupply of renewable energy at, uh, in Switzerland, for example, during winter. So that's why cars in future, as maybe all other uh, energy applications, should also be a part of the energy infrastructure in future. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you both for the first um, inputs you made. We now ask the economic representatives. So I start with Felix Amberg. Where do Swiss solution providers stand today with regard to sustainable construction? Maybe you can update the audience on that. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'd say Switzerland has a long tradition in recycling, reuse uh, material, and the already twice cited Gotthard Base Tunnel is a very, very good example of that because 30% of the excavated material were treated on site actually and used as concrete aggregates for, uh, for, for the construction of the base tunnel. So I would say that basically there is in Switzerland in the construction is industry, also, also coming from the private side, a great awareness of these aspects of sustainability. And also, if we refer to the innovative power of Switzerland companies, there is also a, a wish and an, 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 an intention to integrate new technologies as a keyword, as a buzzword, digitalization, mm -hmm. because new ways, new things, need no, uh, modern technologies. This means that, that th this approach uh, or this per perception goes both for large companies, but also for a lot of smaller companies. We are in Switzerland, we have a lot of SMEs, but what we also now these days have explicitly in the, in the area of sustainability, we have a lot of startups. We just have heard of one of this Hyperloop, which is exactly something in that direction. So we have a very lively scene of traditional firms with a traditional strong awareness of sustainability in combination with new startups bringing new ideas into that uh, domain. So basically, I'd say Switzerland is well positioned. It's at the forefront of the technology. But when I refer to what you just explained, that. Switzerland is a tiny little spot, <laughs> and there are huge, huge amounts outside of Switzerland. I'd say we are all still at the very beginning of a huge transition we face in, in uh, infrastructure construction. Excellent. So thank you, Felix. So if I summarize what I've heard so far, so we have the ideas, we have the research, we have the ambition to share that with everyone to make our, our globe better and more sustainable. And um, yeah, we, we're ready. The ecosystem is ready to, to, to run. Mm -hmm. um, I'm Coming to you, Edgar, you present yeah. the railway business. What is your vision uh, within ABB um, to in this field and what is already possible today? We have heard a lot of, you know, 10 years ago, five years ago, and maybe you can share something which is a bit more more close to us. Yeah, it's really a bit closer than, than Hyperloop and, and, and Cargo Sutra. It's, it's uh, to today in today's infrastructure, the today's uh, rail and, and electric uh, bus infrastructure. and we see our contribution to sustainability is really the energy efficiency. We are doing propulsion systems, uh, converting the energy from, from different sources to, to drive the train, to, dr to drive the bus. And we see it as, as really important that there we have the, the, the most uh, efficient systems. And we really managed in the last years to reduce the, the consumption of such a passenger train between uh, 20 and 30 percent. And I think you will agree with me that uh, the most uh, sustainable energy is the energy which was never produced and, and never wasted. And this is, there are a lot of aspects uh, here. It's also the, the, to feed back the, the, the braking energy as an example in a train. Mm -hmm. As soon as a train is, uh, is, sa is sailing or braking, your mobile phone is charged by braking energy and the air conditioner is also fed by, by, by braking energy. So. These are technologies which they are available today. Uh, you can build that in and, and with that you can reduce the, the, the energy consumption. And then we, <laughs> we have a bit less uh, a problem with, the, with, with, with new, new source of, uh, sources of, of uh, renewable energy. And uh, yeah, my vision would be if, if we would manage to, to electrify the, 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 the public transport on ground, hmm. I don't talk about the uh, airplanes and, and ships, but if we would be able to public passenger transport by, by 2030 to have all electric, I see some good examples. Uh, Switzerland Railway, that's a good example. I learned from the guests from India <laughs> already that they are ready in 20, uh, 2024 uh, with uh, 
uh, electrified uh, railway systems. So that would be a big, a big step. Mm -hmm. I, honestly speaking, the hydrogen, the green hydrogen systems for the long and heavy haul trains, that will take a bit longer, in my eyes. Okay, so mm -hmm. technology is ready. I, I've heard here. Yeah. I see that also. Uh, colleagues from India, they, they are on it <laughs> and, and they're realizing it a bit <laughs> earlier. But obviously, 2013 seems to be an amazing year for our planet when it comes yeah, to yeah. <laughs> infrastructure. So that's uh, look, looking, forward, looking forward to that. Um, <laughs> now, maybe coming back to you, Karen, um, as we have listeners uh, around the globe uh, online and here in, in this room, uh, what advice could you give to them when they think or plan on? You know, real uh, infrastructure projects in a sustainable way. What would be your well? If I talk points? about you know the materials, I think uh, investing in the materials is a very good investment because it can be rolled out all over the world and at very large scale. For example, our new cement type, um, which is called LC3, we estimate can save between 400 and 800 million tons of CO2 a year. And that's between 10 and 20 times the emissions of the whole of Switzerland. And we're now working with companies in more than 40 countries. And we've most of the costs are paid by the private sector. In fact, we've managed to get to this point with an investment of roughly 10 million. So it's really very small compared to <laughs> the cost of Hyperloop and, everything and um, cargo suits around. So I think it's you know, been a very good investment. And I would encourage uh, other countries to take this up. We're very happy to talk with them and help them on this path. Excellent. You stay as well for the network yeah. launch. For yeah. Okay, very good. And maybe to you, uh, Christian, what would be your advice to the audience um, thinking on the infrastructure project in a sustainable way? Yes, we see that mobility is uh, not very efficiently used, so cars are more or less empty when they drive on the roads. And we have a lot of very short distance driving by cars, which is also not sustainable, not only from the energy consumption, but also from space, cars use and things like that. And we think that uh, we, we have to uh, improve both on the technical side, we have to improve cars, <coughs> car technology, and on the other side, we also need some non-technical measures to improve the transport of persons without cars. So this means, I think, uh, we need more flexibility between the different um, modes of uh, driving and traveling, and uh, this should be simplified very much. In, in as a maybe other part, what I mentioned before is, we see that the CO2 emissions will become more and more expensive, and uh, energy storage and uh, the time where energy is consumed becomes more and more important regarding the price, so I, I'm very sure that in future also these secondary benefits like uh, energy storage uh, could be an important part for mobility because we see that a lot of cars stand still for uh, 23 hours per day and during this uh, time these cars could act as uh, energy storage device for example. Wow, that's... Um to me as well, <laughs> your approach, but amazing, yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. That's, I, I see that, thank you. Maybe I do a last uh, round of, um, uh, if you have one wish, I would say until 2030, just per coincidence, <laughs> what, what wish would that be? I maybe start, <laughs> start, start with you, Karen, again, and then mm -hmm. we go one after the other. Oh, gosh, that's a very difficult question. <laughs> you didn't warn us beforehand. Uh, but I think uh, it's really to improve awareness of what really is possible and what's not possible. In the field of construction materials, you still have a lot of people who think some magic solution is gonna drop from the sky. And we see a lot of startups, particularly in North America, based on ideas which are frankly very dubious and you know, like trying to sell people perpetual motion. So it would really be that people are, are better educated in what's realistic in terms of CO2 savings. So we put our energy in the right place. Thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. Felix? Um, well, when it's, uh, I wish for 2030 from the construction mm -hmm. industry, explicitly infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Infrastructure is mainly uh, a thing that is, let's say, ordered or handled by, by governments. 
governments but as such are, let's say, rather reluctant into go innovative new ways because best practice is what normally is implemented. I've been talking about innovative solutions, that is the whole topic here. But innovation as such, there is not much best practice because it's innovative. So what my wish, my personal wish would be that these two players, the construction industry, which is innovative and search for new, new ideas, finds on the other side by the, by the clients, by the, the administration, a more promoting or at least supportive attitude that new things could be tested. Because if we just do what we have been doing the last 50 years, and what is in the codes, it means there won't be any innovation. Mm -hmm. So my wish, wish would be that these two partners, that they really become partners, and not just a, 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 a company or a, a government ordering something to be executed. If we want to go into that transformation, we have to collaborate, and that means we have jointly to go into the risk, but also in the, in the benefits of new technologies. Thank that would you. be my wish. Yes, thank you. And I think your wish m might have come through already today because we have many so. ministries from abroad which made their way up to here to listen, to be curious. Mm -hmm. and, and you are the expert, the expert here on the Swiss mm -hmm. side to connect afterwards in the networking. So I would say we don't wait until 2030. <laughs> we no, 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 I hope today. that by 2030 this really will <laughs> be oh, the normal way of doing it. <laughs> 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 Perfect, super, thank you. What about you? No, I think by, with, by my wish we can also start today. <laughs> we are all... Uh, humans and uh, we, we are used to, to a certain comfort and I think uh, we are also not uh, don't want to give it up but my wish would be that that we really think about how can we keep the comfort but do it with less energy consumption or with renewable energy mm -hmm. and, and and all that to, to really uh, become more sustainable and yeah it's if we can do it with, with keeping our, our comfort level, that, that would be the best for all. Uh, also for, for our children, and, and that's, that would be the right thing for the future and the Earth. Thank you. Yes, please uh, applaud. Yes, I heard one applause in <laughs> person. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. How about you, Christian? Yes, my wish is <coughs> that we get a common worldwide common view to phase out fossil energy, uh, also in mobility sector, in airplanes and all over the world. And I think this is only po possible if we uh, improve um, corporations. We should link, uh, let's say, sunny regions with uh, other regions with less sun and we should um, get much more resilience into the system. And um, yes, there's a lot of improvement also for innovations or a lot of space for innovations. But we, sh we should phase out of fossil energy very soon. Very current topic. Thank you so much for <laughs> your wishes and big applause to the panel. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. This brings me now to the almost last um, guest on stage uh, for the closing remarks. So I'd like to welcome Thierry Deo. He's a founding partner and chief executive officer of Meridian, based in Paris. Meridian is a global investor and asset manager specializing in public and community infrastructure with a sustainable and long-term view, as I understood. And thank you for being here, uh, Thierry. Um, I give you the word for just sharing with us, you know, why have you have invested not only in Cargo Souterrain, but also the broader topic and how you do perceive Switzerland in this environment. Thank you. And uh, since I'm uh, between uh, you and lunch, uh, I'll be quick. <laughs> um, I mean, first of all, I think you, you said the right words. We are managing 19 billion in sustainable infrastructure, which is really our key area of investment with mobility of uh, goods, services, and people, uh, uh, but also um, transition to a low carbon economy with new solutions as well as social infrastructure. So why cargo terrain and why, why Switzerland? Why am I so keen and why am I so bullish about this project? First of all, it's, it's a very innovative uh, project. And in terms of sustainability, I just want to connect what was just said on this panel. 
it will be sustainable not only from the usage perspective, but it will also be sustainable throughout the supply chain of the construction, the operation, because we have all the concrete specialists here to make it a low carbon concrete. We have uh, all the construction companies to make this a low carbon construction. And it's quite important as part of the, of the carbon footprint of those type of infrastructure, but also the operation using obviously frugally uh, energy, but clean energy as well. So to me, that's a very innovative uh, project that can be a really a, a star that Switzerland can export in the future. When we think about sustainability, we think about partnership because we don't believe that you can achieve anything sustainable without partnering. And, and the first partnership for us is to actually partner with our Swiss investors. We, we love and we're very proud to, to uh, change the world of people in their own country. <laughs> it starts there. Uh, and also showing our investor what we can contribute by supporting projects like Cargo Souterrain for our Swiss investors is, is, is a quite important uh, theme for us. The second type of partnership is a partnership with government. I think none of these challenging, innovative projects can be successful without a very clear vision and strategy from government and a very clear commitment. This is a huge private investment that will require decades to become profitable, to work, to bring what it needs to bring in terms of value to investors. And the fact that stakeholders in Switzerland, uh, from the federal government to the final vote, uh, got together to change the law and put that in stone because that's very important. So I would say the solidity of the commitment of Switzerland has a lot to do with my interest uh, in investing in cargo souterrain because it would have been a lot more difficult in a different country uh, because you don't necessarily have the solidity of this commitment and it's fundamental for long-term investors to have that partnership with also the public sector in such a, an important piece of infrastructure that would deliver services to, to, to the public. So really, Cargo Souterrain and Switzerland has a real product, and I think it could be replicated in many other places because the mobility of goods within cities, within areas, is one of the biggest pollution problems for air quality, but it's also one of the biggest uh, emission problem for a greenhouse effect, green gas, uh, green gas, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and, and, and really what uh, I, I think 2031 is the big target. I think the challenge is we should try to advance to 2029. <laughs> so, because <laughs> 2030 will be the big moment where the whole planet will realize that we haven't quite reached the 1.5 degree uh, uh, trajectory, so we should be better, and Switzerland can be better with Cargo Souter. Super, thank you so much, <laughs> Thierry. So let me summarize my, my takeaways of the last minutes. Um, thanks to Swiss innovation and technology, trains will fly at 1,000 km per hour very soon. Secondly, Innovation brings value only if governments are open to listen, are also risk on that side a little bit, so that the population can take advantage of the great ideas and technologies we are around, not just in Switzerland, but globally. And third, Switzerland is here for you when you think on a sustainable projects in your country. Let's talk, let's start talking right in one or two minutes, but then let's continue as well this dialogue on every level within Team Switzerland, which is the, the, the organization, the various organizations which have put together this event for you today as a first time meeting. Um, I would like to point out maybe a few people in the room that you know with, with whom you could discuss what. Um, from the State Secretary for Economic Affairs, you could just address uh, Martin Roth. Martin, maybe, yes, okay, Martin Roth over, over here. From the export risk insurance, you could reach out to Peter Gisler in the room over there, thank you. And from Swissmem side, uh, Stefan 
Brubacher. Yes, thank you, Stefan. Swiss Rail, Edgar Keller, you have seen him, seen him on stage. And from SG side, it's uh, Simon Wies or Thomas First, the deputy CEO um, of our company, where you can connect easily with. Um, this brings me to the closing statement, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you were um, inspired by the ideas, the solutions, the visions as well, um, Swiss um, research and economy and politicians have, because it's only together we can enable all that. And you will now have the opportunity to ex exchange your ideas, your questions which might have come up with the experts. Um, if you have a project in future, think on Switzerland and rethink infrastructure projects sustainably. Thank you, enjoy lunch, and let's talk. <laughs>